All right. Hey, everybody. I am super excited about Saturday Knit Live. This is going to be so much fun. I have never done a live quite like this before. Um, so first of all, welcome. Let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, I am so excited, like I just said, but let me introduce myself in case you're new here. Um, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty on Instagram, and I live just outside of Dallas, Texas with my husband and our dog, Toaster. Okay, I see that you can hear me, awesome. Um, so this is gonna be so much fun. I just want this to be like a fun, social, relaxing time where you can feel like you're hanging out with your knit or crochet circle and just chatting with people and enjoying enjoying life, work on your project, whatever you want to do. Um, so I am making sure that I have everything ready. Um, hey guys, I see you guys saying, hey, I have your chats over here on my computer so that I can actually read them or read some of them. Um, but I also have my friend Rebecca, who some of you guys know, she's gonna help me um, monitor comments tonight and she's going to be the one that is assisting me as we start playing the games. She's gonna be the one letting me know who the winner is. <laughs> so um, make sure you pay close attention when we start those games and um, shout out to Rebecca for helping me with this tonight. So first I just want to hear where you're coming in from, which a lot of you were already chatting about that before I got on. So thank you so much. Let us know where you are coming in from and also um, what you're working on. It doesn't matter if you're knitting or crocheting, if you're cooking dinner, if you're sleeping, whatever you're doing. And if you are somewhere not in the United States, I love to hear what time it is where you are. Cause in Australia, I think it's morning and in Europe, it's like middle of the night and some of y'all are still here, which is amazing. Um, and we're gonna have so much fun tonight. We're gonna play three different games I have planned from ideas that you guys gave on Instagram. And then we're also gonna give away um, three different prize packs and then a few of my patterns I'm gonna give away just along throughout the video. Um, so I am gonna be looking over here on my computer just a little bit, looking for messages from Rebecca. I think she's gonna be getting to me soon with some of our first pattern um, prize winners. Okay. Let me make sure that I said everything that I needed to in the beginning. Um, Yes, so if you're just now coming in, um, make sure to let us know where you're coming in from and what you're working on. Oh, also, later we're gonna play, our last game is gonna be Never Have I Ever Knit and Crochet Edition. So you might want to grab, um, like if you don't wanna play with your fingers, the classic Never Have I Ever, because you wanna continue knitting and crocheting, if you wanna grab like a pen and paper or maybe like some stitch markers so that you have something to like tally um, whenever it's something that you have done. So thought we would make it fun since we're knitters and crocheters and if you wanna grab stitch markers for that, you can, you will need nine of them. And then also make sure you are um, here on the chat because that's where Rebecca is gonna be looking for um, answers to the questions that I'm gonna be asking and where she's gonna pull um, prizes from. Um, prizes, anyone can enter from any part of the country. Um, these are open to everyone. So super excited for that. All right, let me see where you guys are coming in from here. Okay, Ooh, there's a lot of you tonight. I am, I am so excited. I just, this is gonna be so much fun. Okay, I see Illinois, California, um, Adelaide, Australia, Canada. Let's see, lots of people saying hi to Rebecca. I went all the way back to the beginning for this. Oh, somebody in Northern Ireland, it's midnight. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for staying up late. That is definitely past my bedtime. I see Colorado, Nebraska, Ohio, Germany. Yes, I see you. Um, where else do we have? Uh, let's see, it's 1 a.m. in Germany, oh my gosh. Somebody from New York, Florida, another person in Australia, Washington, Pennsylvania, and some people in Texas. I gave a hint earlier that one of the games we are playing, you might wanna know some of the uh, Texas 
like hand dyer. So if you have a computer nearby, feel free to do a little research before we start playing. Okay, um, Western Australia at 7.05 a.m. Oh girl, okay, getting up early, awesome. Okay, I think I, I, I definitely did not see all of your messages, but I um, want you guys to know that those that chat is going to stay with this video when it uploads to YouTube, um, just FYI. So it will be seen by anyone who wants to go back through and watch this um, after the fact if they can't make it. Okay, so who's ready to play our first game? I'm excited to. Let me see. Let me see if we have a giveaway yet. Uh, okay, um, Rebecca, I don't know if I told you what email to use, but if you can email me at the nitty natty email, that will be great. And anyone who is winning a prize tonight, you're going to have to hold a little responsibility here to email me as well. So you're going to want to know my email. It's really easy. It's nittynatty at gmail.com. And if you can't reach me on um, email, my Instagram is at nittynatty. So if you win a prize tonight, I'm going to say, um, this is the winner. This is your name on YouTube, but will you email me? Because YouTube is not the greatest way to get in contact with people. You can't really like direct message them. But my email is also on my about tab on YouTube if you need to find it later. Okay. So let's talk about the first game. Okay, so game number one is going to be a Would You Rather Knit and Crochet edition. So I want to show you the prize first. Let me make sure I have the right prizes here. Uh, oops, I should have had this pulled up earlier. But I have not that's not true. I was going to say I haven't knit a single stitch today, but that's not true. I've been crocheting just a little bit. Oh, okay. I found our first winner. Okay. So you didn't know this, but Rebecca was looking for something very specific when you came in with your intro. And this is a pattern prize winner. And I am so excited for this person that has won because we chat all the time. And I don't know if you have won something from me before. Um, and I never know how to say your name, girl, but um, L V Elvedia Knits, Elvedia Knits, I know you've told me, but if you will message me either on Instagram or email me, you have won a pattern of your choice. So um, send me an email or a message and let me know what pattern you would like. So first prize of Saturday Knit Live is for Elvedia Knits. Okay, now let's talk about the first game and the first prize. Okay. Prize number one is going to come in this cute little bag. <clears throat> and it says, a knitter has to believe in something. I believe I will knit another row. <laughs> Which I think is so cute. It's just that fun muslin bag. Oh, and I also want to say that all of these prizes are coming from my stash. The yarn is unused. The bags are gently used. And if you have a needle or a hook, they are also gently used. So if you're like, I, that's not for me, don't worry about it. You don't have to, you can say you don't want the prize or whatever. Um, but I promise you that we don't, everything is nice. I keep things nice and clean. We do have a dog though. So that's the only thing if you do have an allergy. Um, but besides the bag, the first prize for this would you rather is going to have these uh, self-striping sock yarn. And the label on this, this is from um, Crafting My Chaos, which is hand dyed in Georgetown, Texas. Um, I got this when I was on a yarn crawl. If you, sometimes I feel like labels can make it hard to see a yarn for what it is. So if you cover up the label here, this yarn is just the most fun rainbow, I think, ever. It's so much fun. But I am choosing to give this away because I have so much rainbow yarn. Um, so bag plus this plus um, two nine inch chayagu, ch oh my goodness. I don't know how to say these, but chayagu, chayagu um, needles so that you can knit socks if you want to. So this is kind of like a little sock kit bag plus needles plus yarn. Okay, so are you ready to hear 
how you can win that. <laughs> and again, Rebecca is going to be looking in the chat for the winner, so make sure you're on the chat. Mm. You love dogs, so you're fine with some hairs from Toaster. I don't know if there will be hairs in it. I hope not. <laughs> but maybe some dander, right? You just can't help that in your house. Okay, so we're going to play Would You Rather. And I have, um, Rebecca, I told you I have 10 questions. I actually only have eight. <laughs> I have eight Would You Rather questions. And if you want to play, you're just going to answer in the chat box. Now, Rebecca is going to be looking for a very specific answer. So all you have to do is play, and she's going to be looking for that answer. Um, so you won't know what it is. It'll be a mystery. So just keep playing for all eight questions. All right. So I'm going to ask eight knit and crochet would you rather questions and then you can just put which one would you rather do some of them are going to be like we're going to start out really easy like just simple ones and then we're going to go a little deeper so i hope you enjoy this game all right let me check the chat real quick uh oh somebody already says they love nine inch circulars awesome okay oh is k here from the crazy sock lady. Hi, Kay. Oh, everyone's saying hi to Kay. That's so awesome. Okay, get ready. Rebecca, are you ready? We're gonna play our first game for the sock yarn in the bag and the chai goo, chai -goo needles. <laughs> okay, would you rather, I promise we're starting out real easy, knit or crochet? So answer, would you rather knit? or crochet. I can't wait to see. I'm going to be drinking lots of water because I turned the air conditioning off. Knit, 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 and I see a crochet in there. And Tunisian. Ooh, I love that. You love both, but knitting more. That's probably where I am too. I love both, but I would have to choose knitting as well. <gasps> knitting has been hurting for a bit. Oh no, yeah, stay with crochet. Okay, awesome. So the that was the first question. And now let's move on to the second question. Remember, you, have, you can play the whole game and Rebecca is looking for a specific answer to one of the questions. So make sure you play the whole time. Okay, would you rather have one whip or multiple whips? And if you don't know what whip means, it just stands for work in progress. So basically your projects. Would you rather have one or multiple? <laughs> Oh, I love the answer to this question. I saw, I already saw somebody that said one. One? Oh my goodness, you guys are amazing. Okay, I, my answer is I always have multiple because I feel like I have one in, in, one in each different category, like a sock or a shawl and a garment sometimes. But yeah, I need to go between them. And plus, like sometimes one will be on an easy part and I can take it with me and then sometimes one will be on a complicated part or I need like a fun complicated pattern that I can think about and then an easy one for on the go. Variety is the spice of life. Yes, Katie, I love that. <laughs> oh my goodness. One but you're starting to like more whips. Come over to the dark side. It's okay. I know it is so fast, Rebecca. <laughs> All right, let's go to the third question. All right, would you rather, and this is knit or crochet, um, would you rather make socks or shawls? Socks or shawls? I, I picked those two things because it's hard for me to choose in betwe between the two. Lots of people saying socks. Yes, I, I don't know. Right now I haven't made a pair of socks in two months. And it's very strange, but I have made several shawls. I actually finished two shawls like in the last week. So yeah, it's hard. I, I, I want to make, I think I've said before, I want to make um, crocheted socks, but I know they're not exactly um, the same as like a knit sock. You know, they're, they're wear, their purpose is different. You can't get socks to fit. No, we can work on that. You like both. That's okay. Socks intimidate you. Yeah, they can be intimidating, but you can totally do it. Okay, can't stop making shawls. One of the Kate says she can't stop making shawls. I love that. All right, 
Now those are the easy ones. So let's go a little deeper <laughs> into more classic would you rather where you have to choose between two bad things. <laughs> and they're still knitting and crochet edition. Okay, would you rather, listen carefully for this one, give up knitting and slash crochet for an entire week, no knitting and crochet for a week, or only get to knit and crochet for 15 minutes a day for an entire month. So let me say it again. Would you rather give up knitting for one whole week, knitting and crochet, and then you get to go back to it, or would you rather only get to knit and crochet for 15 minutes a day for a whole month? 15 minutes a day, or give it up for a week? That's tough. <laughs> give it up for a week. Okay, I'm so interested to hear some people, some people are saying they only get 15 minutes a day right now anyway. Oh no. I would definitely give it up for an entire week and get it out of the way because I feel like it would force, I would never do it like on my own and it would be a good reset for my body. <laughs> and then I could like really do something else like clean the house or work out and then go back to my obsession. I know that's such a hard one, right? Oh my goodness. You don't get to knit every day anyway. I know, it's so hard. You can use the free time to try other hobbies. I agree. You would use the 15 minutes because never not knitting. <laughs> oh, I love that one. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Would you rather get a stain on a whip or get a hole in your whip? I don't know if you've ever spilled something on a project before. So would you rather get a stain on a whip, remember it's on the needles, what are you going to do, or a hole? Ooh, I don't know, a stain. Luckily I've never gotten anything, like I know somebody that was knitting like something white and they spilled spaghetti sauce on it and it was a whip and it was on the needles and they were like, what can I even do, I can barely wash it. And I did also get a hole in something, not a hole, but I was pulling on something too hard and I tore a, 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 the edging of a finished object. I was so sad. <laughs> yeah, a hole sounds more fixable. How big, I love this. Depends on the stain, can I wash it out later? How big is the hole? I love that we're like overthinking our, our pretend game. <laughs> that is so funny. You've done both and it stinks. I know, I know, oh my goodness. Okay, that one was fun. All right, we have three more to go and then we're gonna find out who wins that yarn. Okay, would you rather go to Rhinebeck or go to Vogue Knitting Live New York? Rhinebeck and Vogue Knitting Live New York are both like yarn, knit, crochet festivals. They're very different, but they're both in New York. Which one would you rather go to? <laughs> And maybe you've been to one of them. I'm super jealous. I've never been to either. Lots and lots of Rhinebeck. I think both sound incredible. And if I had an opportunity um, to go, like something that I was already gonna be there for the weekend they're held, I would go in a heartbeat. But New York is a trek from Texas. Yeah, I've never, I, I have been to festivals, but not one that. Although Fiberfest is getting very big. Okay, that one was fun too. Vogue, because you've heard more about it. Rhinebeck. Man, they would both be so much fun. Okay, this is a good one too. You have to listen, you have to listen to this. That's my teacher. I'm like, listen to the whole question <laughs> before you answer. Okay, would you rather live next door? to one yarn store, like you're literally next door, you can go every day, or, and that's the only yarn store. Would you rather live next door to one yarn store or live 30 minutes away from two yarn stores? What would you rather do? Live right next door to one great yarn store or live 30 minutes away from two great yarn stores? What would you do? <laughs> Oh man, see I, I worry about the temptation of next door, <laughs> but I would love to just like walk into the yarn store anytime and just hang out and grab yarn whenever I need it and late at night I'm like, oh I don't have a, 
16 inch whatever needle and I can just, well, I guess late at night you couldn't, but <laughs> you could go get it right away the next morning. All right, 30 minutes away, next door to one. Yeah, 30 minutes if the next door one didn't have your brands that you like, that's true. <laughs> oh my gosh, 30 minutes a day, you wouldn't have enough money for yarn. That's so funny. I have to drive, well, the closest one to me I could probably get to in 30 minutes if there was no traffic and it's a wonderful one. Um, and then there's another one I will drive an hour to. So we'll drive for yarn for sure and for, for friendship more, <laughs> to see my friends. Oh my goodness. Hi, Nancy, welcome. Okay, Bethany, you have to go finish dinner. I'll, that sounds good, no worries. All right, one more, would you rather, and then we're gonna find out who wins the prize. Okay, this one is so hard, I don't have an answer to this one. Okay, would you rather never get to knit or crochet with your favorite color or never get to knit or crochet your favorite item. So never get to work on your favorite color or never get to work on your favorite item again. <clears throat> Let me just take care of this person here. Hold on, it's going too fast. I don't know if you guys have the ability to do that, but the person that's just typing in that one word, can you block them? <laughs> I don't know if you're able to do that. I cannot seem to get it because it's so fast. <clears throat> or Rebecca, if you can do that, that would be great. Okay, would you never get to knit on your favorite color or never get to knit your favorite item again? I think for me, this is pink, the color pink versus socks. <laughs> and that is way, way, way too hard to choose. <laughs> I really don't know if I could choose. Um, obviously, this is a pretend game, which is super fun. So I think I would have to say that I would never knit with pink again. Oh, that hurts my heart. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. But I definitely can't not knit socks, even though I have it in a minute. All right, that's all of our would you rather questions. We do have another game coming up. So let me see who our winner is. Okay, I don't know if you can hear the dog barking downstairs. This is real life live, you guys. All right, email is loading. So if you are the winner, you're going to, yeah, those were brutal questions. <laughs> We're all contemplating life. If you are the winner, when I, I haven't announced it yet, but when I do, if you will email me nittynatty at gmail.com so that we have a way to communicate and get that prize to you. Okay, so the winner, let's see. Oh, let me make sure. Okay, perfect. So the winner for this is Chloe Thernstein. I think I said that right. Chloe Thernstein, will you email me nittynatty at gmail.com and you will get this bag plus this yarn and the two nine inch circular needles. Good, you saw. Yay, email me Chloe at nittynatty, not at nittynatty nittynatty at gmail.com. You are the winner of our first game, hooray. Okay, thank you so much, Rebecca. Y'all, give Rebecca a shout out because this is a very challenging job right now. <laughs> she has to watch that chat for something very specific that I have given her and it is a challenge because it's going fast. All right, let's play another game. We've got two more games tonight. Um, stick around for all of them if you can. Um, I will explain the next game and the prize in just a second. Um, but the last game we're going to play is Never Have I Ever Knitting and Crochet Edition. And I think that one's going to be super, super fun. Okay. So. Hmm. All right. The next game. I need to see which one I deem to be the prize. <laughs> I planned this all out before. You would think I would remember. Okay. So the next game is called Guess the Dyer. And the winner of this game is going to win. Again, if you miss it from before, these are yarns and 
bags from my stash. The yarns have never been used. The bags may be gently used. Um, and this one actually includes a crochet hook. So um, if you win, hopefully you're a crocheter. If not, I'm sure you have a friend you can give it to. Um, but let me show you the yarn first. Um, this game, I said, is called Guess the Dyer, and it's gonna be all Texas dyers. I didn't intend for it to be that way when I started pulling yarns out of my stash to play, <laughs> but they just all happen to be. So I thought that would be great. We can go ahead and narrow it down because I feel like guessing yarn dyers is, is tough. So we're, we're gonna narrow it down to that. But the winner of this game will win, yay Texas, <laughs> I love that, will win yarn from another Texas dyer. Alicia goes around. Um, this is not going to be one of the other yarns that's part of the game. So don't guess Alicia goes around. Um, this is a fingering weight yarn. You get these two colors and it is 50% um, silk and 50% merino. So it's really, really soft. Yeah, it's so pretty. I picked these out to go together for a shawl. So you can do whatever you want with them. It's gonna be your prize, but I think they're super, super pretty. And then also this cute little bag. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize this bag is also from a Texas person. I think it's from Yarn Carnival. How cute is that? Um, it's one of those little, ben is it a bento bag? I don't know. Super cute little bag. And then also this gorgeous wooden crochet hook. I think it's so pretty. The only reason that I am not keeping it is that I have a really hard time crocheting with this type of head. Somebody told me, I think it's called, there's like tapered and inline, and this is the one that I have a hard time with. So super beautiful. I think you could probably use it with this yarn, but this is for the guess the dyer. You're going to win this prize. So make sure you guess for every single dyer because Rebecca is going to be looking for um, the first person to answer one of these. And so make sure you're quick too. All right, so here's how we play. Okay, I think we got that at her in 2019. Yeah, I don't know if Alicia goes around dyes yarn anymore. I also used her yarn for my wedding shawl, her lace weight, and it was absolutely beautiful. But I don't think I've seen her in a couple of years. So there you go, it might be even more unique than, than it could be. Okay, so I have five different skeins of yarn. I'm gonna hold them up one at a time, covering up the label. And your job is to guess who dyes it. These are all gonna be Texas dyers that dye in Texas. Um, so it would behoove you, don't you love that vocabulary, to look up some Texas dyers. I don't think that's cheating because it's gonna be hard to like find a colorway that fast. I'm not gonna tell you the name of the colorway or anything. You're just gonna have to guess the dyer. So once you know who the dyer is or have a guess, just start typing it in. And again, Rebecca is going to be looking for a specific answer and that's how you are going to win this game. All right, so let me make sure I have them all ready. Okay, ready for skein number one. I'm covering up the label. I might just slide it off actually. Okay, guess this Texas dyer. It's so pretty, and I'm not giving these away. <laughs> these are mine. <laughs> guess this dyer. It's a self-striping yarn, dyes in Texas. Hmm, who could it be? I'm gonna give y'all a second before I tell you who it is because I know sometimes the chat and the video are behind. <laughs> I love how a lot of y'all are just writing in names of Texas dyers. You're like, just put them all out there. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I've seen the correct answer a few times, so I'm going to reveal that this is mustache yarns. Love mustache yarns. She is incredible. Um, her name is slipping my mind right now, um, but she does such a good job um, making, this is actually two little skeins. It's a, I think it is, maybe not. Yes, must match skeins, two identical skeins. So when you wanna make socks, you have two little, you know, 50 gram skeins and you can start them in the exact same place. So foolproof, Stacy, that's right, Stacy. So mustache yarn. So good job if you guessed that one right. Make sure to guess all of them if you want to try to win that prize. 
All right, here is the next one. Again, these are all Texas dyers. What colorway is that? I should tell you. Jelly Belly. It's a good one. I need to do that soon. All right, taking off the label. Okay, ready? Here is the next Texas dyer. All right. This one's gonna be harder because it's not super like distinct as the stripes are for mustache yarns. Okay, love to see all those guesses coming. Oh, that's a good guess. It's not the correct answer, but that's a small company. Hmm. <laughs> I should have thought of things to say <laughs> while y'all are guessing. Oh my goodness. Oh, those are so good. I see Madeline Tosh, Lone Star, Suburban Stitcher, Round Table Yarns, lots and lots of guesses. I think I have seen the correct answer, but I'm gonna give y'all just a few more seconds. This is so fun. It is a pretty color. The color is called Spring. Spring. Okay, this one is Chasing Rabbits Fiber Co. I have been knitting and crocheting with Chasing Rabbits a lot lately. So Chasing Rabbits Fiber Co. in Spring. So great job if you got that one right. And we've got three more to go. Y'all are good at this. All right, the next one. Oh, am I showing? I feel like I'm showing bias right now because I love this yarn so much. <laughs> Taking off the label. You ready for this one? The chat goes quiet when I'm about to show the next one. That's so funny. Ready? This is the third yarn. <gasps> That's how I feel when I look at this yarn. Like just, it's so pretty. The first like five guesses were all the same dyer. That is hilarious. I love that. Yeah, wow, I know, right? Isn't this the prettiest color? I have to knit with this soon. I, I got it recently, this year. So, so pretty. All right, I have definitely seen the right answer because <laughs> you guys got that one quick. Um, this is called Quinceanera. That's the colorway, Quinceanera, and it is Suburban Stitcher. I mean, look, her label is even this color. So good job if you guessed that one correctly. Thought I heard someone coming in the door. Yep, Suburban Stitcher Quinceanera. Okay, two more, and then we get to find out who the winner is. Okay, this one, I'm gonna be curious if this one might be a little harder because I feel like this one is pretty local. I'm looking at, I think it just says, it doesn't say what city, but I will be very impressed, ready? I mean, they're big in Texas, but here we go. Here's the next one, number four. Hmm. Yes, you might, if, if you were first to guess, it doesn't mean you have won, you have to win the game. So I have Rebecca looking for something very specific for that. Ooh, I don't know if I've seen it yet. Texas Dyer. Hmm, I might have to give some clues on this one. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't seen it. Matches my nails. It does match my nails. Okay. Um, the colorway is really special on this one um, because this the colorway is the modern skein. That's where I got it from, is the modern skein, um, which is in Texas. Oh, can y'all hear that dog? Okay, I don't think I've seen the answer yet. So let me see if I can think of a clue. Um, the company, we can just call it yours. <laughs> I'm sorry, these are not for a giveaway. <laughs> um, Red Stag, yeah, that's a good guess. It's not Red I just showed the label if you just saw it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, the um, name of this yarn company, another word for it would be a circus. It's not circus, but that would be another name for it. <laughs> Maybe y'all don't know this one. I'll give it a few more seconds. Yes, somebody got it. You got it. <laughs> yep, 
Yarn Carnival, good job, you guys. Okay, it's a good thing we're not playing that, I don't know, whatever that game is called. Yarn Carnival, these guys are great. They're awesome, they've got beautiful, beautiful yarn. Yarn Carnival, high wire three ply in colorway, the modern skein, bingo. <laughs> Too funny, all right, we've got one more to guess. Make sure you guess all of those questions. Guess all of the yarns so that you can be entered to possibly win. Rebecca is looking. Okay, last one. I'm not gonna be able to take the label off without ripping, so I am just going to try to cover it. Ready? <laughs> last one. Guess this Texas yarn dyer. I was like holding the label like this is ridiculous. Who is this? Hmm. Self striping yarn, Texas dyer. Not a clue. That's okay. <laughs> Honestly, I would do horrible at this game, so don't feel bad. <laughs> okay, I see lots of guessing. I see lots of. Um, dyers that I haven't heard of before that I feel like I now need to go look up. Okay, clueless, it's okay. <laughs> I love that, y'all are so funny. Yeah, Malia is not from Texas, but it does look like her um, gobstopper balls. Okay, ready, I've seen it a few times. This is Night Owl Fibers. I think she's in Houston, I think it says right here. Night Owl Fibers. All right, pat yourself on the back. If you guessed even one of those, because you are amazing <laughs> to be able to guess that. Rebecca was looking for a specific answer to one of those questions. So let me see if I have the winner. I made a huge mess here. Oh, hold on. I just like threw, I, I threw your prize down. I promise it's okay. Um, but I'm gonna find the winner in just a second and then we will play our final game, which is Never Have I Ever Knit and Crochet Edition. And these questions were literally so much fun to come up with, I'm so excited. Okay, the winner, you're winning some Texas yarn, appropriately for the game, and a Texas bag, which is Yarn Carnival, funnily enough, the one that we had some trouble with, and then a beautiful crochet hook if you're not a crocheter feel free to pass it on to someone who is. Um, this is handmade, by the way. I did not say that. This is handmade. And the winner is Kathy Keeley. I hope I said your name right. I know I said Kathy right, but I'm not sure if I said Keeley right. Kathy Keeley, you are the winner. Yay, you saw it. Okay, Kathy, make sure to email me, nittynatty at gmail.com and you guys who are like, I'm not from Texas, I didn't know those dyers. I know, I, um, I apologize for that. I think that I will have this game maybe again sometime and I'm gonna use global dyers. So your time is coming. <laughs> I feel like it's, that's how it is when I go to trivia. I'm like, I'm never gonna win at trivia unless they do knitting or Harry Potter. I just don't know enough about other things. Okay. That's your prize, Kathy. Make sure to email me. We have two winners so far, and we have one more game and one more prize pack to go. Okay, let me see. I think I've been keeping up pretty good. Um, if anyone has just come in in the middle of this, hello, my name is Natalie. Welcome, thank you so much for coming. We have been playing some games for Saturday Knit Live, and yeah, and um, we're gonna play one more game. So I'm really excited. This one is going to be an equalizer because everyone can play. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything and then I will show you the final prize. Let's see. Yep, okay. So we're gonna play one more game and then I'm gonna stick around and see if you guys have any questions. I put out a sticker on Instagram for some questions and I think I got maybe like one or two questions so I did not, um, I forgot to copy them down is what I should say, I forgot. So if you wanna ask me questions at the end, then uh, make sure you have those ready. I'm gonna be giving away some of my patterns. Okay, one last game. Oops, 
Here we go. Rebecca, you're doing so great. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, this is Never Have I Ever. If you win Never Have I Ever, you are going to win two things. Um, this Sweet Georgia Party of Five, which is five um, mini skeins. Each one is 28 grams, 105 yards. So that's like 500 and 25 yards, <laughs> I think. Um, so this will be your yarn prize. And I found the perfect thing that matches, that goes along with it. This is super cool. This is vintage Erin Lane. Erin Lane is a bag company and she is one, Lindsay is one of my friends and I just love her. This is a really cool notions pouch, um, but it's huge. Opens up like this. There's a flap you can stick in. It's got like a little um, Velcro to put like small things, scissors, stitch markers. Um, and then it's got lots of uh, pockets, two layers of pockets. So you could slip like double pointed needles, scissors. I mean, honestly, you could stick the points of your circular, circular needles down in here um, and just let the cords pop up. So it's a really cool pouch and it is from Erin Lane. And I thought that that just matched the yarn perfectly, so why not put them together in a prize? So the winner of Never Have I Ever will win that yarn plus Notions pouch. So let me tell you how you can win. Um, basically, hold on. Got to get my water. I am going to make nine Never Have I Ever statements. They're all knitting and crochet, completely appropriate. Um, Cause I know sometimes we hear never have ever and we get scared. Promise is just knitting and crochet stuff. Um, and if you have done one of those things, then you are going to like, we can play it like normally it's played with your hands, but I'm sure you're knitting and crochet. So I have a solution, but normally you'd play with your hands. And I would say like, never have I ever been to Rhinebeck. And if you have been to Rhinebeck, you would put down a finger. That's an easier one. You'd put down a finger. And then at the end, um, you might have, let's say like, I don't know, two fingers remaining. And at the end of our game, you're gonna say how many fingers you still have left. And there's a specific number Rebecca is looking for. And that's how you will win. So you won't know, you don't know the number. Just play and tell us how many fingers you have left up when it is over. If you don't wanna play like with fingers, Basically, you just need, you know what? I think I said earlier, grab nine stitch markers. I should have said 10. <laughs> 10 stitch markers, or if you have a pen and paper, make 10 marks on the paper. And every time you have done something, you can mark off one of those marks, or you can slide a stitch marker over. So basically, you need 10 of something, whether it's fingers, stitch markers, or marks on a paper. And then as I say statements, if you have done them, mark them off. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if those directions make sense. And again, you're playing for yarn and a notions pouch. So I'm gonna wait and make sure that we are good to go here. Let me see. Okay, perfect. All right, instructions make sense. Enter a number in your calculator and phone good idea. Then you can just write like 10 and then minus one every time you have done something. See, I knew you guys were smarter, <laughs> more creative than I am. Okay. I have nine statements. Get your 10 items ready and here we go. And just to say, I think I have done every single one of these things. So I'm going to say never have I ever and you put down a finger if you have done it. All right. Statement number one, never have I ever ripped out a finished object. If you have ripped out a finished object, you will put a finger down and I have to put a finger down for that one because I ripped one out like last week, a finished sweater. So never have I ever ripped out a finished object. And if you wanna let us know in the chat if you have or haven't done these things, feel free to do that and remember your number for the end. That's where you're gonna, we're gonna pick our winner. 
Yep, definitely have. And yeah, Rebecca has frogged like, I don't even know, five sweaters. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, your worst nightmare. It happens, it happens, it happens. Okay. Um, I need lip gloss. <laughs> I'm parched. Okay. Next question. Never have I ever stayed up past midnight to knit and crochet. Hmm, I have. <laughs> Some of you are right now if you're in Europe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Five, yeah, five sweaters. I'm pretty sure it's more. Guilty? Stayed up late past your bedtime to knit or crochet regularly? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's like a badge of honor. Sometimes it's because I need to finish something and sometimes it's because I just want to. <laughs> Every night of your life, Kate. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, here's the next one. Yeah, too many mistakes after 10 p.m. We should all listen to you. <laughs> okay, never have I ever made somebody stop the car because I spotted a yarn store. That's too hard to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have, um, I feel like I've done that a few times, but definitely on vacation we'll be, you know, driving into a town. I'm like, oh, there's a yarn store, we have to stop. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness, somebody else is on here being silly. That's so funny. You're usually the one driving. Oh no. You've made friends walk down a different road so you can go. It's whenever whenever I'm on vacation, I'm like, all right, we gotta. Or even if like I'm, cause I live outside of Dallas, if I like, if we're going somewhere, I'm like, we'll just stop by. Or if I'm going to Fort Worth, I'm like, let's just go into West Seventh Wool. <laughs> okay. Third question, I think I have seven fingers left. Um, never have I ever been to a virtual knit and crochet night. Everyone has to take one off for that because you're here right now. <laughs> never have I ever been to a virtual knit crochet night. You have, oh, somebody said they blocked them. Thank you. I think there's a way I can do a moderator on here. Like Rebecca is helping me, but I didn't assign her as a moderator. So I need to look into that. Somebody next time. Okay. Yes, you've been to a virtual knit and crochet night. If it's your first one, welcome. So excited and honored to have you here. Um, this is so great that I feel like we're all expanding our savvy with technology right now. And even when we're allowed to like, you know, see our friends that are close by in person again, I don't want to stop doing these because I think they're so much fun and we can connect, you know, no matter where we are. Okay. I have six. I told you I've done every single one of these. So, <laughs> all right. Question number five, never have I ever spilled food or a drink on a whip. Totally, <laughs> totally, definitely messy over here. I, I eat all the time while I'm knitting and crocheting. I try to set it aside, but like I'm a slow eater. I like to take my time. <laughs> so sometimes I will spill coffee, always coffee. It is, it's always coffee. Sometimes it's not even when I'm actually working on the project. It's when I'm like carrying project and drink to another location. Oh, if you haven't done it, good job. I haven't spilled a lot, just a, just a teeny, teeny bit. Um, <laughs> I feel like there's a whole like, dis I've had a whole discussion with people before about um, knitting and crochet um, approved snacks that don't get like stuff on your hands. It's just, it's funny that that's a thing. Coffee all over your tote, oh I remember, oh no. And yes, it's smart to drink white or clear liquids around knitting. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, I'm down to five. How many, you, this is not for the win, but like, I'm just curious how many, how many fingers or how many markers do you have right now? I have five. <clears throat> Six, seven, eight. Oh man, I got everybody on the virtual knit night though. I feel like I'm about to get everybody on this next one too. 
All right, you ready for it? <laughs> Never have I ever found a stitch marker in the couch cushions. If you haven't, then what is going on? <laughs> Never have I ever found a stitch marker in the couch cushions. That's a definite, nah, yeah, I've done that a lot. Actually, we just the other night, we moved the entire couch because Kent, my husband, was building a Lego kit and he lost one of the pieces. And so we were moving the couch and then we're like, well, it's a sectional and it's separated. So why don't we just go ahead and like vacuum? <laughs> and then we are like, well, why don't we just like rotate the rug? <laughs> so it was like 10 PM and all myself, my mother-in-law, we were all doing that to the couch. It was, it was weird, but we did it. And I found like five stitch markers underneath the couch. <laughs> so stitch markers. Oh, and I found a darning needle. Yes. Darning needles. He's your husband says, how do you get those everywhere? He's almost vacuumed up so many. I don't know. I like, they're not falling off my project. I guess they're falling out of the container that I have them in, but it almost seems like I just took a container and was like, and threw them everywhere. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. I'm down to four. This one. We'll see. We'll see how many people this one gets. Never have I ever painted my nails to match a project just me. <laughs> Never have I ever painted my nails to match a project. I um, find myself doing that more often with uh, when I have to do tutorials on my own designs, I kind of want them to match. And I always think that I'm <laughs> no, everyone's like, no, I feel like I'm in a color mood sometimes. And so if I'm like feeling purple that week, I'll be like knitting purple and paint my nails purple. Nobody's ever done that. They're like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> that is so funny. I also think that the color mood thing is real because I used to work in a yarn store and oftentimes people would come in and they would be shopping for yarn that was the same color as what they were wearing. Like if they were wearing a blue shirt, they would be looking at blue yarns. So I feel like we do tend to go towards colors at certain times. It's just funny. Okay, uh, so nobody on that one. Okay, good, just me then. <laughs> okay, two more. Never have I ever had a pet attack my knitting or crochet or yarn. So if you have had a pet attack or destroy your knitting, crochet or yarn, put a finger down. <laughs> oh man. Hi, Alizé. I know it's just, I know it is funny how my nails match. I like that. I'm digging it. Oh, yes, that has happened before. You want to come in? <laughs> Kent says he doesn't want to come in, but it, we one want day. you to come in. One day. One day. Okay. Kent says he'll come one day and he will be in one of my videos. <laughs> Okay, it seems like several of you guys have had your pets get into your yarn. Toaster, um, while he hasn't done anything like per permanent damage to a project, he's gotten into some yarn, especially mohair. There was a time last year where he kept getting into the same skein of mohair, and I learned that mohair was something I just have to put away. So, oh, hi. Hi to Kent. Yes, Kent, I asked him to come be in it tonight, and he said, that he had something else to do, <laughs> which is true. But I'm slowly working on getting him into my videos because I want him. I think you guys would think that would be fun. Okay, last question. I have two fingers left. You have six still. Wow, that's impressive. So after, um, after this question, you're going to say how many fingers you have left and that's where Rebecca's gonna be looking for the winner. So <laughs> you still have eight. <laughs> Good for you, that's awesome. So last question, and then after this one, will you please put in how many fingers you have left, and that's where we're gonna find the winner. Okay, one more. Okay. Never, <laughs> never have I ever dropped a metal hook or DPN, double pointed needle, in a quiet room or movie theater 
or just anywhere quiet. <laughs> so if you're a crocheter and you use metal hooks, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you use DPNs, the sound that a crochet hook makes when it drops on a hard floor is horrifying. <laughs> Everyone like looks up, even if you're in a yarn store. And honestly, it makes me think of, um, if you're a fan of The Office, um, there's an episode where they all go to watch Andy at a theater and he's performing on the stage and Michael, I think, um, has like an empty bottle, a glass bottle, and he drops it and then it just, you know how theaters are with their slanted chairs, it just like rolls and rolls and like keeps making noise like while the actors are going on. That's how I feel it would be if I dropped a crochet hook in a theater. <laughs> Oh my gosh, during your kid's spring concert, you dropped a hook. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, the embarrassment or that you can't continue without the hook or needle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's the, it's the disruption. It's, it's the embarrassment. <laughs> oh my gosh, when everyone's taking a test. No, that's hysterical. Oh my gosh. You've never done anything. Well, these are not things that like, make you a knitter or crocheter. They're just silly things that I was thinking of. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you've written in how many fingers you have remaining and I am going to um, go see if Rebecca has our winner. And you are winning yarn and a Notions pouch. And then after this, it is almost seven o'clock, so I'm gonna hang on for, um, I don't know, at least, probably at least 15 minutes or so if you wanna hang around, and I will answer questions, and I'm also going to randomly give away some of my patterns. So if you are interested, if you wanna hear questions or just chat, um, hang around after this prize is announced. Okay, actually, I'm gonna make you hang around one more second because I wanna just say, Huge thank you to Rebecca. If y'all can say thank you to her again, because she's had the hardest job right now because she's looking at that chat and <laughs> looking for specific things the entire night. So just say thank you to Rebecca. She's so awesome. And um, I think she's sad that she couldn't win the prizes. <laughs> we were texting and she's like, so can I win though? I'm like, no, Rebecca, you can't win. <laughs> She sacrificed her chance to win so that you guys could. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, without further ado, the winner of Never Have I Ever and these two items is Lindsay Hill. So Lindsay Hill, if you will email me nittynatty at gmail.com and we will communicate about getting your prize to you. So three winners, well, three pack winners. I gave away a prize at the beginning and I'm going, I'm sorry, a pattern at the beginning. And I am going to also give away some more patterns right now. Uh, everyone's saying congrats. Yeah. Yay. It's so exciting. So I hope you guys had fun um, with those games. I actually had, I think two more game ideas um, that I'm saving because I think we should do this again. So if you want to come back and do this again, let me know. I also would not um, say no to playing like Never Have I Ever and Would You Rather again because I think that if I open it up and you guys come up with some of the Never Have I Evers and Would You Rathers knit and crochet that they could be really, really fun. So definitely excited for that. All right, so if you guys have them, put your questions into the chat box. I am going to be looking for questions right now. I know the hour did go by really fast. So crazy. All right, put your questions in the chat box if you have them. I'm gonna be picking people to win pattern prizes. Oh, you want my yarn cozy pattern. Okay, who is that? DJ Jones. Okay, you asked a question, DJ. If you'll email me at nittynatty at gmail.com, I will send you a pattern of your choice and it can be the Yarn Cozy if you want. But Yarn Cozy Light comes out next Friday, May 1st. Uh oh, now the questions are going too fast. <laughs> Hold on, I'm coming. Okay, I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Uh, okay. Okay, Renee asks, Renee Schimmel or Schimmel, um, email me, if I, am, if I am answering your question, I'm just gonna say this, if I am answering your question, 
then I want you to email me nittynatty at gmail.com and I will send you one of my patterns. <laughs> okay, so Renee, you can email me. Um, are you still able to teach online? Yes, I am still teaching online. Um, sometimes it's on Zoom, like I will um, alongside the teachers because I'm a, um, I am a reading specialist, so I usually just see small groups. I am going alongside the teachers and when they're having meetings with the kids and then I also, um, we were already using an online platform at school to read and so the kids are continuing that at home and honestly, some of them are really thriving on that. Not all of them, I'm trying to work on communicating with all the parents, but some of them are like blowing through reading levels and it's been really amazing. So it's been different, it's not the same, but yes, I'm still teaching online. Okay, do I have, Katie, Katie, email me, um, Katie Abbott, do you have a favorite dyer from the selection of the guest dyers? Um, that's, that's not a fair question. Um, I, I feel like the person that I just personally connect with <laughs> and I connect with her like color aesthetic is Suburban Stitcher. <laughs> I love all of the dyers, but Diane, I just, I don't know. I love her and I love her yarn. And so I feel like I'd have to say Diane if I had to pick a favorite. Okay. Um, Ellie, Ellie, will you email me? Ellie asks, what is my favorite knitting needle? Um, I like the Chaigu Red Lace for socks, and I prefer my Knit Picks wooden needles, which I've had for like 10 years, my wooden needle set for pretty much everything else. So um, I've always wanted, uh, I don't even know if they make these anymore, rosewood needles. There's a rosewood needle set. I remember just coveting it in high school when I worked at the yarn store, but it is a tad pricey. <laughs> so my Knit Picks needles have lasted me so long, I just keep working on those. Okay, um, let's see. Don't, I'm not gonna be able to answer every question, so I'm just kind of scrolling through here real quick. Oh, this is a good question. Um, farming our backyard, will you email me? I know we've talked recently because I think you won something earlier. Um, are, will you ever move back to Tennessee or are you a Texan for life? Um, probably a Texan for life. I didn't know that when I moved here after college. So I um, grew up in Tennessee, went to college in Tennessee and then moved to Texas to teach. And then a year later I met my husband, Kent, and he has never lived outside of Texas. So yeah, I think I'm a Texan for life. I think I'm stuck. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Um, hold on, Onita, oh, I have been looking for your tote and yarn buckets pattern forever. Uh, well, do you mean you can't find them? You can email me and I will send one to you. How about that? Okay, let's see. Foxer Boxer, do you have any summer projects planned? Um, I want to make a tank top. I have some pretty pink cotton uh, fingering weight yarn and I would love to either knit or crochet a tank top. So I think that's going to be coming up soon on my cast-ons. Um, Amy, and don't forget, if I'm answering your question, email me. Um, Amy, would you consider designing a garment in the future? Um, I would consider designing a garment, although I don't know if... Um, I don't know if I will. Like, I, I guess I would consider it. I think it would probably be something pretty, like, boxy because that's my preferred, like, fit. <laughs> so it would be, like, simple. Simple and boxy is kind of where I'm at. So maybe in the future, but there's so many people that do it so well. I think I might stick to what I know, which right now is seems to be cozies. So I think I'll stick to that for a little bit. Okay, let's see. Um, zero left-handed. Have you ever knit two sleeves at the same time? Yes, I have when they're flat back and forth and I've had them on the same needle. Um, I don't think I've ever done sleeves in the round at the same time. I have a hard time with the going in the round and doing two at a time. Plus if they're attached to the sweater, I just feel like that's a lot to maneuver. So I think just when they're flat. Okay. Oh, hi, Donna. You've taught 40 years in special education. That's amazing. Um, okay. Let's see. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Just kind of scrolling through. Whoa, it started to move. Um, okay, I think I answered that one. Okay, the Maker Mama says, where is your favorite place to knit? Um, probably if I'm in the house, I love knitting in bed. <laughs> Sometimes I'll get up early so that I can like get ready for the day and make my coffee and then I get back in bed, turn on the TV and knit or crochet. I'm definitely planning to do that tomorrow morning. So that's, that's where I will be. Um, but I think my favorite place to knit is on the go. Like I just like to be having, I, I like to feel like I'm, I'm there and then I'm also working on something, something about that feeling. Well, like at sporting events, restaurants, in the car. That's my favorite knitting. That's my most productive time. Okay, this is a good question, Lindsay. How does your husband feel with you doing two extra jobs besides your full-time job? Yeah, that's getting to be a little tough. Um, so my full-time job being a teacher doesn't take the amount of time that it did when I was going to work because I, one, don't have to drive anywhere anymore. <laughs> so it, I probably spent an hour or more in the car every day driving to and from work. Plus I was at work from like seven to four o'clock <laughs> and then driving home. So I probably was, I was gone obviously from like 6.30 in the morning to five o'clock at night. And so my work does not take that long anymore. The actual work sitting down. So that actually has been pretty easy to manage. I'm an early riser and I get up early and I get a lot of stuff done before anyone else is even awake. <laughs> so it's been, it's been okay, but um, definitely like today I've had a lot going on and it's a Saturday and so that's been hard. So, you know, we're like every married couple, we have to talk about things <laughs> and figure them out. So. It's a process for sure. Thank you for asking that. Okay, let's see. Um, wow, there's a lot of questions. Hold on, hold on. Sarah, you said you want to design a garment. You should. Oh, Sarah, while you're here, did you see the answer to on my last podcast to your question? <laughs> Lots of people were suggesting um, uh, advent calendars for you. So go check that out. Okay. Jasmine, Jasmine, make sure to send me an email. Do you prefer to knit socks two at a time or one by one? Um, I like to knit socks one at a time. Um, I have in the past knit them in tandem. So like I'll, even though they're separated, I'll knit, I'll start one and knit maybe the cuff and then start the next and knit the cuff and then go between the two. I have not been doing that lately. Maybe that's why I've had a hard time getting back to socks. So maybe I need to do that for my next pair. Um, but yeah, I like to do them separated. I can't do, I don't like having two balls attached to my project, two balls of yarn, if I can avoid it. Oh, you want me to design a garment? <laughs> Okay, I will take your ideas. <laughs> okay, I saw another intriguing question. Let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, I, I think I saw this one a couple times. So I, um, I didn't catch your name because it went too fast, but email me if you, you asked me this twice. The story behind Toaster's name. I get that question a lot and I probably need to make a separate video that I can say, hey, go here. Um, but Toaster is named after the Brave Little Toaster, which is a children's um, book and movie. So Brave Little Toaster. And my husband Kent had Toaster, got Toaster before we, um, or while we weren't dating. So he got Toaster and he named him Toaster. He'd always wanted to name a dog Toaster. So yes, email me, Mariah, perfect. Okay. Oh no, there's two Jasmines. I'm getting confusing. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll say your first and last name. Okay, I should design a cardigan. You should design a cardigan, Kate. <laughs> yeah, Kate has, is designing garments. You're so awesome, Kate. Okay, um, let's see. Let me do just a couple more. Um, Sarah Perk. Sarah asks, when you first started filming yourself, how long did it take you to get used to talking to the camera and connecting with people on the high level that you do? 
Um, well, first of all, thank you. That's a really nice compliment. I think it took a little while. My, um, my first videos that I put up were not the first videos that I did. Like I, I, did, a, I did practice a little bit um, and film some videos and then watch myself back just to see what it was like because talking to the camera is totally different than talking to um, a person and yeah, it's just different. So I would say um, it probably took me several months of doing once a week videos to feel truly comfortable. Um, and then lately I've started doing the live videos and I feel like that was a whole new learning curve because you want to, um, you want to be bubbly and animated, but you also want to be real and you want to give um, space for it to feel like natural, but not be too quiet. <laughs> so I feel like that's been a whole new one. If you go look at my live video that was like three or four videos ago, I hope that you will see an improvement already. Hi, Kent. Hey. <laughs> okay. Kent, you want to come pick a question? No, thank you. All right. Rebecca, thank you so much. She's headed out. All right. Um, let me pick one more question. It's going to be hard. Let's see. Let's see. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sorry, I'm like getting all sniffly all of a sudden. I'm not like emotional. I'm just getting sniffly. <laughs> Hi. Okay. I, while I do feel comfortable doing videos, it's still weird doing videos in front of other people and my husband has decided to come into the room. <laughs> okay, um, this is the last one I'm gonna um, answer. Um, were you scared to do a pattern on Ravelry? I want to do one, but I'm scared that it won't come out nicely. Okay, um, I wanna answer that question because I feel like there's probably a lot of people on here that want to do something, whether it's write a pattern or, you know, whatever, whatever your goal is. And I just wanna give you some encouragement. So I feel like that's a good way to end. So were, was I scared when I first put out a pattern on Ravelry? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Am I still sometimes nervous when I put stuff out? Yes. Um, and I think that that's okay. Like it's a natural feeling, but I just want to encourage you that if you have an idea, um, an original idea, like you should put it out there because you cannot get better at it. You can't um, learn. Nobody can learn about you if you don't share. So even if you're worried about it being like not that great, still do it because I promise you're gonna get better by doing that. So I had to go back through all of my first patterns like three or like six months in and kind of revamp them because I already had improved and I wanted to like, to make sure everything was higher quality. So I just feel like you can't do some, you can't um, get better at it unless you do it if, unless you do it like not well. <laughs> okay, this is not very eloquent, but I feel like when you start anything, it's not gonna be your greatest work because you are gonna improve. And then you can always go back and improve the beginning. So I would not be nervous about it at all. Definitely give it a try. Yeah, just jump in. See, that was bad. I should've just said that. Just jump in and do it because yeah, that's how you learn for Sure. Okay. So if I answered your question, make sure you did email me. If I missed your question, I promise you it wasn't that I was intentionally trying to. I was just trying to read what I could get to. Thank you so much. Yeah, Alizé, it was so, I'm so glad you came. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. Every single one of you, it means so much to me. And I'm excited to do it soon. I'm super open to your suggestions. If you can think of any other fun games or themes, for these knit and crochet YouTube lives. We've also done Zoom before, happy to go back to that. So my Instagram inbox is open. Send me a message if you have an idea, I'm happy. Happy to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.